Well, I told you guys that the next time that you would see prickly pear in a video, we would be out on the trail. And today I'm gonna deliver on that promise, but I gotta be honest, I'm both excited and a little apprehensive about how things are gonna go today. While we have done a ton of work over the last two years on this 74 Cherokee, there's still quite a few things to do, but we're gonna just do it. We're gonna go put some road miles on this thing and we are gonna hit the dirt. Nothing extreme, but we're gonna do a good shakedown run. Plus, we've done a little bit more work since the last time you've seen it, so we'll talk about that as well. But first, a little more coffee, then give a once over, and then, then we're gonna hit the road and hit the trail, guys. I'm ready for this. Let's hope we don't call AAA today. With an old classic like this, you constantly need to be taking a look at your oil level and the important essentials under the hood. There is no high-speed computer in here that will flash you a warning light or display some error code if something isn't working right. So, you've got to keep an eye on things often. to express how happy I am to be driving this with a little more confidence, knowing that we have done so much work to this that it's a little more reliable. And look, that there's still plenty of bugs that need to be worked out of this thing, but I mean, we're finally to a point where we can drive this and we're hitting a trail today. I'm super excited. And, and none of this would have happened without a lot of elbow grease and some help from my good friends over at Shift Auto Works. They have been instrumental in getting this thing to where it is now. And of course, the Magnaflow exhaust that we just put on, which sounds so incredible. I love it. Okay, uh, we have a little ways to go. I'm gonna go top off the fuel tank, which we will talk about here in a minute, and then we will be on the trail. And uh, today I'm just listening for you know every little rattle and creak and just trying to feel how it drives and just see if there's anything that needs some more attention before we take it on a much longer trip that's one of the things about driving one of these old vehicles is you have to be aware of everything and uh, you know ever since I did the interior it's gotten a lot quieter in here maybe it doesn't sound like it to you guys but it's definitely a lot quieter in here and so there's a lot less rattles and bangs but I'm still, I'm still keeping an ear out for stuff. So, a few miles to go, get some fuel, get the trip. I'm heading out today to a local favorite trail of mine, and I actually haven't been up here in a while, so I'm excited to see how the trail conditions are. It will be the perfect trail for a good shakedown run to see if there are any pending issues that need to be sorted before I take this old girl on a longer trip. Before I head up the mountain though, I need to ensure I've got a full tank of fuel. And just last week over at Shift Auto Works, they helped me swap out the old rusty steel fuel tank that was not the original tank and it had been kind of jerry-rigged to make it fit. And I believe it was probably only around 15 gallons. We replaced it with a new polyurethane tank that is 21 gallons and similar to what have been original on this Jeep. Plus, the old tank, my gas gauge never read accurately. So, having a few extra gallons of gas and knowing how much fuel I have going forward is going to give me some good peace of mind. These guys did a great job making this tank fit perfectly and sorted all the details. Very thankful for this. We got a full tank of gas and uh, I got some good news, which some of you are gonna probably gasp and think that's terrible news, but I'm calculating 
you know, my MPG, I have to do it manually. And I'm this first tank of gas and all back city uh, driving 9.6 miles to the gallon, which I know that sounds awful, but previously before we did all this work, I was lucky to get seven and a half or eight miles to the gallon. So nine and a half is a big improvement. And especially if we get it out on the open road and stuff, and uh, maybe we can get a little bit more. But you know, this thing belongs on these backcountry roads like this. This is just beautiful. Okay, we're gonna go uh, drive a few more miles, air down, and then we're gonna hit the dirt. Just got to the trailhead and look this really isn't a trail that you need to air down on but we're on leaf springs and small tires so i think it's just prudent to make it a little more comfortable today at least uh, that's my that's my thought process i just got to figure out this new there we go it's a new little kit i got just for just for the Cherokee, it's a little smaller, more compact, and since I only have smaller tires on here, I don't need this big, massive compressor, so hopefully this will work. Well, it's official. Project Prickly Pear is on its first trail at least since I've owned it. No idea how often this was off-roaded in the past, but man, what a good feeling after all the work over the last two years to finally have this thing on the dirt and optimistic about how it's gonna perform today. We're not doing anything crazy. Uh, you know, just a, just a mild trail, climbing up a mountain, beautiful scenery, but uh, this is a good first shakedown run, I think, for this Jeep. A good feeling guys. Today I am just outside of Ramona, California for this shakedown run on a local hidden gem trail that I have been coming to for many years. It's a bit of an unknown trail, but it will reward you with some incredible mountain views as you climb up the trail. This is an up and back trail that begins around 900 feet in elevation and climbs all the way up to just under 4,000 feet. I really hope that I can make it up all the way today. It's 11 miles of climbing the whole way up and sometimes things like that can give a carbureted engine like this a bit of a challenge, but we'll see how it goes. climbing up this pretty good mountain for a little while and it is doing great no problems with the incline because you know sometimes carburetors can be fickle and with the elevation climb so far it still feels great uh, and I'm glad I aired down because it's not rough but it's definitely you know it's definitely noticeable there are a lot of squeaks and rattles when we're on this trail and I am noticing one that I think is up front it's probably a bushing so we may have to address that because it's a little annoying uh, but otherwise you know this is awesome the one thing that this thing really needs 
is a stereo. Now, it has an AM radio in here, and it does work. The AM radio does surprisingly work. However, it would be nice to have a stereo where I could, you know, play some regular music. But I think what I'll do is something a little discreet. Uh, you know, so you still see the AM radio, but you're not gonna see, you know, the modern day, the modern day stereo. The speakers you'll probably see, but the stereo I'm gonna keep hidden. But uh, some tunes today would be perfect. All right, everything's been going well on the trail so far. Just started to get a little hiccup. We'll see how that goes as we continue to climb in elevation. But I've come up here to this uh, great plateau. A couple folks camping up here, got some cool vehicles. So I thought, you know, just take a second and go check those out. Plus, there's a little spot here where I want to try to flex out Project Prickly Pear because I think there's a little bit of rub. That's something that I was concerned about, but I think if we go get it flexy, we at least can identify where that rub is. And then uh, and then we'll keep, uh, keep climbing, guys. So far, so good today. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm from Roaming Reckless. I'm on a 50-state road trip with my 1997 Land Rover Defender 110. It was a... Um, X military special vehicles build from the Royal Air Force. I just had it imported from the UK, but yeah, it's uh, like 70,000 on the clock, right-hand drive, 300 TDI. Super cool. If people wanted to uh, check out more of your Defender, where can they go? Roaming Reckless on YouTube. Go check her out, guys. Yeah, my name is Cena. My dog's Duncan. And uh, I'm the last 10 years I've been living in Bellingham, Washington, uh, originally from Texas. This is my 06. Lexus LX470, known as just the Toyota Land Cruiser. It's about hitting 310,000 miles, wow. just barely broken in. Wow. And I got a whole setup, got a bed right here, got the cooler, have drawers, I have these drawer slide outs from Landshark. The only things I've done are the front, I have a bumper and a winch on it, some lights. Those were some very nice adventure vehicles. And honestly, it's pretty rare that I come across folks up here camping, but those were some great folks that know about this little hidden gem and they're out here having some memorable adventures. I hope to see them again soon, but Prickly Pear and I need to keep moving. We have a mission and up next, we need to get a little flexy. All right guys, so we've got a nice little rut right here, nice little climb. I should be able to angle it and see if we can flex it out pretty good and we'll, uh, we'll find out if we got some rubs or not. it right there on the back. I think that's something we can rectify. Not too bad though. Well pretty cool to run into some folks up here on a weekday which is not really typical. Now we're just kind of playing around getting a little flexy. Oh you can hear the rubbing. Got some rubbing. That's all right. Oh yeah rubbing a lot. That's all right. Kind of expected it. I mean, we knew that the 33s were going to be a tight fit, and they are, but we made it through it, so that's good news. I think I just dusted out the camera, though. <laughs>
I was a little worried that was gonna happen. As we are climbing up in elevation, the fuel mixture is getting a little rich, as you can see from the plume of black smoke coming out of the exhaust once I got it restarted. I'm gonna have to get very familiar with this carburetor and make sure I can tune it on the fly because elevation changes when we are out on the trail is just the name of the game. But now, I'm a little worried. I hope this doesn't keep me from reaching the top today. We're still climbing and boy, I'll tell you what, this trail is a lot more washed out than the last time I was here. You know, we had a lot of rain this winter and I haven't been up here in a while and this is definitely a little rougher. There's more ruts, more exposed rocks and that's what happens when you get that rain. You just get that erosion on the trail. So it's definitely been bumpier. So I'm glad that I aired down. Now, uh, the carburetor does seem to be a little finicky. It's stalled twice already, but it's running okay now. And look, temperature is holding great. Uh, oil pressure gauge, I don't think that oil pressure gauge is accurate, but it is showing oil pressure. I can see the top, but now I'm fighting with time because it's actually Devin's birthday and Regina was very clear. She said, if you go out, you need to make sure you're home for Devin's dinner. So I'm gonna try to make it to the top, we'll see. Uh, but uh, I gotta make sure I'm home on time for dinner. And again, fingers crossed, we get out of here with no mishaps right now. I'm happy guys. I'm happy. I know we're not perfect. I know there's things that got to be fixed. Thanks guys. How are you doing? Good, yourselves? Good. Beautiful view at the top? Yeah. I have been up there before, just not in this thing. We'll see if we make it. It's well, she's an oldie and she's working on being a goodie. Still a little more work to do, but she's doing okay. We're getting so close to the top. I can taste it. I can see it in my sights. We are almost there. Uh, just passed a couple of guys in a uh, forerunner out here just uh, enjoying the day. And they said, uh, they said there's a little bit of a rough spot up ahead, but no worries at all. Uh, very nice. Uh, you know, when we get to a tight section like that, when you're on a shelf road, you know, it's really common sense is who, who's easier to pull off to the side. And we just kind of did some hand signals and got it all worked out. No problem. Super nice guys just out here enjoying the day. And uh, yeah, guys, I want to make it to the top. We're almost there. We made it to the top guys. Prickly pear made it up here. Ah, oh, this is awesome. Of course we need to do a little bit of carburetor tuning, but you know what? 
It made it, no problems. We do still have to get our way out of here and down the hill, but that shouldn't be as hard as coming up. We have climbed the entire way up here, much rougher than I expected, but I love coming up here. The views just go for miles and miles. It's gorgeous up here. The wind is starting to pick up. I'm gonna take a little bit of break, but I gotta get going. So we gotta get back down the mountain, air up, and I gotta head home. Prickly pear making, no problem. Today I have fallen more deeply in love with this old Jeep. And while I was a little apprehensive about how successful I might be today, it didn't let me down. I'm so thankful to have this thing on the trail and very appreciative for all your guys' encouragement over the last two years. It's really given me a lot of motivation to keep on going. And I also wanna thank the partners that I've worked with. They've been super helpful. I think this is just the beginning of many more adventures to come. But first, today, I've still got to make it down the mountain, fingers crossed. We made it guys, we made it off the mountain, safe and sound, no problems at all. Okay, we gotta adjust the carburetor, but that's okay. Got a few things that I wanna talk about when we get home that are kind of uh, kind of top of my mind right now. But first things first, we need to air it up and we still have a drive home to make. <sighs> I love Project Prickly Pear. Well, I would say that was a successful mission. A uh, couple lessons learned though. Number one, uh, we know that the carburetor needs to be retuned a little bit. Number two, we got a rubbing issue and I actually kind of took a, a little bit of body damage in the rear, but that's okay because that section is rusted and it needed to be repaired anyway. So I think when we go to do the actual repair, we'll give ourselves a little extra clearance, but otherwise I think we're good with these 33s. Uh, next is uh, dust abatement because when I was going down that dusty road, the dust was coming up underneath, I think somewhere in the wheel wells, maybe in the sides, but it was getting all inside the cabin. And so figuring out how to seal that up a little bit better. And that also means being able to roll up the windows in the hot summer, which is on its way. And so finding a way to get this air conditioner fixed is going to be kind of up there on the list. But otherwise, guys, what a great day. I'm ready to throw this camping gear in here and go hit the trail. Now, when am I gonna do that? I don't know, because I definitely don't wanna do that on my own. I wanna spend a good couple days out on the trail and I wanna have some folks with me that'll be helpful and a little safer. But today was a blast. If you have enjoyed hanging out with me today, consider joining us over on Patreon to help support this project, our other adventures, and you get some extra content, some behind the scenes stuff. So check us out over at Patreon and make sure you check us out over at trailbreakun.com. Thanks for joining me guys. Uh, this has been a great day. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Thanks for watching.